Today it's uh, about the distinction. It's always our dichotomy and it's about modeling and uh, design. I will show you how this is <coughs> uh, done uh, in, in, in Blender and I will show you a very symmetrical setup in uh, Mathematic. So it's, I think, uh, with this dichotomy and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of learning or relearning the whole stuff uh, with Blender for this lecture. So for me it's very surprising that all these concepts I'm telling you are somehow, and so if you really go into the depths of these things and try to understand and do it in an encyclopedic way, the things <coughs> I'm uh, telling you in, 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 on this theoretical or philosophical uh, level, we find in architecture how to describe that and we want to follow on if, you're, if I dis will uh, <coughs> work on uh, big data, machine and intelligence and so on. They're all there. So it's, it's the interesting thing is that you don't have to invest, uh, invent these things. So it's just always, and uh, this I find very relaxing. It's, it's, it's not a new story, it's just another view to the whole thing. So I'm experiencing that now with these, uh, with these uh, modeling and these modelers, just because I'm going to the very detail and do it uh, encyclopedic and if one can say yeah, it's not about this and so on therefore I'm really enjoying doing all these tutorials there's a, there's a lot <laughs> and uh, but I think and that's the same what I'm experiencing now with uh, with these uh, lectures and then with the with the YouTubes is that uh, I'm starting to have a kind of sediment with, uh, with all these talks. So I'm <laughs> being very careful now in, in Blender and, and, and bringing that to the very detail that if you find time, you really can learn it. If, hopefully it's a good help for that. I don't have to do it twice. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> so it's a sediment of my talks. So this year I'm, I'm uh, somehow in the SCAD and the modeling and I'm free to do different things next year. And I, you still can learn that and I can compress then a, a series of 12 or 20 uh, lectures with the stock uh, to two or three and make different things. So on that I think it's uh, very emancipative. Uh, for me it's very to realize that how the formats are uh, and can be with this technology. It's, and for you it's, it's good you can listen to all these things if you find time for that and so on. I think universities will change like that. It's, it's uh, interesting. You really emancipate from schedules and so on. That's, uh, I, I find that very promising. So these huge lecture halls and so on are only for the big, big events. Uh, <laughs> so it's a rare event and big one. So today it's about this uh, modeling and for me it's, so of course I knew all these things. There's, uh, there are two companies, uh, spin-offs of us, uh, I found my first company on these things. And so, but to see that it's in the very detail working like that, <laughs> it's very surprising for me. <laughs> so I will tell you these, uh, these stories. So to go there, let's um, start with this. <clears throat> so if you have for example go here we had that in our lecture last semester about the colors just to give you an introduction of what it is we had all these dichotomies I had the black ones down and the white ones uh, above so if you go for a color just go for the color we had a whole lecture about images and colors so now we have this color and we make a new color and uh, here you have this color scheme. So and if you look there, you have RGB. So this is a Cartesian space. You have red, a physical space, this is physics. So and this is R, red, green and blue. And this is an orthogonal system, which is in space. You have three dimensions or you have then the fourth one for the um, 
uh, for the alpha value, transparency. And the problem with that is that in physics it's very clear, you have these three dimensions, but to control the actual color is complicated. It's really turned out to be very complicated to get a, to get a, a, a proper color here. Because one, a millimeter change in one of these sliders physiognomically have completely different, wherever you are, if, if physiognomically it's, it's completely different. You don't know where to pull to get from a light brown to an ochre. You don't know how to make it with RGB. Because it's always a combination of these. So it's completely different. So this is a physical space and this is uh, <coughs> So, completely different with HSV. And that's a physiognomic space. And this simply says, I give you this, you see, this is a rotation. It's not linear. It's not three lines. It's a rotational thing. And this is a rainbow. So it's very simple. Go to a certain color and then go for saturation. Or go for uh, the, the black thing. And this is super intuitive. So we had that. So it's a uh, physiological and it's a, uh, it's a physical model of colors. So if we are in our uh, schemes here, let's have a, I can show you how I'm always, the computer crashed and therefore I have to, don't have this actual version. So uh, here we have H as uh, as we, and here we have no, RGB, and here we have uh, H as V. So, so with all our talks, so this is without uh, sensibility. The senses. This makes sense because it's a physiognomical thing. And this is with our eye. And this is with our ear. And this is the talk. And we, I call that sculptural and the other uh, picture. Sculptural is the, <laughs> the eye. And then you look for the shadows and the bright sun and these objects and the sculpture in the sun. So, <laughs> so. This is uh, a talking this stuff, and then uh, with the eye, it's the harmon harmony of, uh, of, of, of things. Harmonic. Geometry, arithmetic, or harmonics. So we go there, and we have the next diagram. So, my hypothesis is, and we will have that, and I will exemplify that, that this is design and this is an architectural model. That's the first thing. <laughs> and the second what I want to show you and yeah. So, and what we had, and this is my hypothesis, and I want to show you that it's working like that in, in this lecture. <coughs> if this is model, uh, this design, then I would say this is uh, code. You code that, and this is with the characters. And this is uh, <coughs> a cat. And you're doing it with numbers. So the principle idea is 
<clears throat> First, I want, will show you examples. Why the, what, what, what are these two things, the ears and the eyes and so on? Why they obviously do somehow collaborate, but uh, there's, it's just a different world, a different perspective uh, to, to, the, uh, uh, to the world. And the mathematicians say they're con uh, conjugate. So now we'll give you an example uh, in, uh, in music, how it works. And then we, uh, I can give you, I think you can get an idea why it is kind of nonsense to draw architectural models. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but to make uh, object design with it. Yeah. So <clears throat> all my talks and all the lectures had been to give this teacher to me. No one, none of this is working without the others. The problem is where you are, what you're looking at, which kind of perspective and, and so on. So the idea is that we have to separate that. We will follow the idea. So if you are here with code, the way of articulating your things is with talks because it's for the ear and it's always a theater play. So you're not orchestrating yourself like in an in a, a opera, which is a harmony of whatever it is of the whole world. So, <coughs> and it's subdividing in parts and so on. Uh, therefore, it's a theater play where individual characters are on stage and you organize them. I think architecture of today or for the last one under 150 years is about a theater play. And therefore it's oral. Sculpture. The talking. You're not looking. So this is what we, uh, what we have. So, and talking is with writing. So there's a notation not the music itself, or it's an instrument. So now, go for the music. So this is Captain Beefheart, one of my favorite. So if we play that, why is it not? Okay, good. So, it's very simple, you hear that, no problem. <laughs> it's good for the ears. <laughs> so, the interesting thing is, so now I show you, ah, that's good. Um, <clears throat> now, as always, yeah, BFART now is, uh, is an MP3 file in data. Now we can say audio data uh, of uh, BFART. And we call that as our data. So it's not about music. That, so it's just numbers. So that's important. We had that in the very first lecture. So now we can ask for the dimensions of data. And we see the <laughs> two channels. So it's a field of, of two lines of numbers. And they are 8.5 8 million numbers each. That's a music. Nothing else, just these numbers. So if you look at it, yeah? Now we go from, here is very clear, so it's so. If you know, so music is on the upper side of our, of our diagrams. Now, if you switch the ears with your eyes, so look at these numbers as you can hear them, one to one, because these numbers are the, the amplitudes of, this is a movement of your speaker. Yeah? And there are eight and a half million positions of your speakers in four minutes or something. That's it. Directly, the numbers to the, so it's the amplitude of the numbers to the, the, the membrane of the speaker. So now let's look at it, list. Plot. Now let's look at the data. Data of from 100,000 
uh, two one hundred thousand one hundred. So somewhere in this. Ah, okay. We need it from the channel one. So here, these are the numbers of a millisecond. Yeah. If you look at it, you can say list plot or this, and then you get the 100 numbers. That's a membrane <coughs> at a time, time domain. So the interesting is, so if you, and these are the, you, you know these, uh, these pictures, <laughs> that you can see anything. So we can say it's a list line plot. So, but this is not music. Yeah. So not 10,000 of these. You can see. It makes no sense for the eye. So that's very interesting. So if you take the numbers as they are, you can hear them, but you can't see them. Because eyes and ears are conjugate. So now you have, <coughs> that's the next, yeah? So of course you can make it a little, uh, this is, the same thing for the whole, the whole uh, uh, frequencies. Now you can go for uh, the spectrum. So the spectrum uh, says, for example, look at the frequencies over one or two seconds. And uh, you see it here. There's a certain composition. So you have certain rhythms here, resonances on certain frequencies. So, and uh, then you have here, here, or you have here certain rhythms and so on. So you have certain frequencies, 400, four, 440 hertz, 480, 600 something, and so on. And if you play a note, you get this frequency over time. And then you have an overlay of these frequencies, and this is what you're seeing here. So now you can say, which frequencies and which intention had been pushed. And these are the frequencies. So in principle, this is a, a keyboard of a piano in the vertical. And this is how strong I push on this piano over time. And that's a frequency domain. So I'm not looking at uh, the things in time. I'm looking on the conceptual thing, how to, uh, how to behave in time, in sync, and so on. So where, which keyboard I press, uh, which, which key on the keyboard I press. So these are the frequencies. And this is for the eye. So here you can, in principle, read that. And we actually do that. This is our notation. So you're looking at it, we have to push. And then we trigger certain frequencies for a certain time, and in this overlay, it sounds. So this is time domain. You can hear that. This is with the ear, so it's the upper side of our diagram. And this is for the frequency domain. And you can see that. And that's the lower part of our, uh, of our diagram. So this is the, uh, so to do that, this is a notation. So it's a direct translation of frequency to a keyboard, for example, that you can play it or to the, uh, to the guitar, whatever it, it is. So this is for seeing. And, and this is for, so this makes sense. Since you hear it. And this makes sense. You can see it. So it's about seeing the acoustics or hearing the visual. And then you always have this double thing. So my hypothesis is that 
if we do architecture today, and if it's for the ears, we need something like this notation. And if we, <coughs> uh, the other way around, this is not this example, is that if you want to design an object, you have to do it for, to, to design an object in harmony, so that it is resonating in harmony, you have to take a tool which is visual. Just always the other way around. So in our, in our actual uh, setup, it, it, this simply means that if you design an object, here with a visual, then it's design, you need head, a head system. And if you arrange them in space, it's putting them on stage, it's an auditive thing, it's conjugate to the design, so it's not design, it's a model. And you need a notation for that. And this notation can't be here, you heard, it only can be seen. And there's no way to transfer it one to the other. So you have to be capable of seeing and hearing. You have to, so this is an intellectual game, rotating these things around so that you can see what a uh, control by seeing what you will hear, what you can't see. These things. <laughs> so I find it very uh, <coughs> uh, uh, clear. So it makes simply makes no it makes no sense to look at it with with these these, uh, these waves. It makes starts making sense in looking at this uh, spectrum, and it gets an instrument if you find notations for that. So I strongly believe that coding is the notation for sculpturing today, or architecture today. It's a notation. And you can't draw it. Then it makes this nonsense. <laughs> so that's what I would would be my hypothesis. Now I show you that it's de facto <laughs> working in this. So so now if we are with this auditive thing, and if we follow the scheme of uh, of uh, a theater play on, a, on stage. This is a way to organize the graphics. So we share graphics and we say uh, red, we say a disk, and we say here and we you know, plot range two and x is true. So this is one of the most primitive disk. So, so if you want to move that, then you simply say trans, uh, uh, to simplify it a little. So now uh, we say geometric transformation of uh, translation transformation, uh, no disk, and then we say this should be translated by 1.0 uh, and uh, here we are. GT here. So uh, we can have the disk on uh, zero, 00 and then 1.2. There are different, uh, so this is how you do it in, in Mathematica. So what you have is, we have uh, the graphics as a stage with uh, certain parameters. 
then we have an actor. If we talk, call it something like an actor on stage, then this is the actor. The actor get a mask. Uh, it's a red or blue. The actor gets a mask. And then he gets directives. So which means that this is the uh, director's uh, uh, talk. So the director says to these actors with a certain mask, go one to the right. That's the directive. So you have these four principal steps. You always have the actor, you have the mask, you have the directive, and you have the stage. And then you take a picture of that. So. And you can have uh, a second com director's command. So then and you see it's uh, very intuitive. Then. So if you once got it, it's very compact how to do that. So here, and then now we have two commands and we get two of them. So this single actor with his mask gets two directives on this stage. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a directive to, yeah, this is the directive yeah. to this, the directive is first is the actor, and then it's a sequence of things that the actor should do. It's always a sequence. Graphics, this is very important, graphics is in time. Graphics is never in space. So you never have a, so it's, it's a kind of uh, rhetorics that you say, <laughs> if I draw something, that this is in space. It's always in time. When people had organized their things in space, they always had written it with, uh, with, um, with, uh, with words, the phonetical alphabet. So if you, start, if you start drawing, it's always in time. So somehow, by, if you look then at the drawing as an object in space, it's uh, a shortcut. It's always about, with Kepler, how to move things around and so on. And being able that things in, in a perspective, like in the perspective drawing, that being able that they that you're able to draw them, this always means it depends on how the constellation is and, and so on, and it's about movement. And because you are able to move a thing as movement, you can put it on a piece of paper and say, <laughs> This is a description of my of my space. Otherwise, you are in space and you can't articulate space. You have to be in time to articulate things in space. And this is a whole story about Renaissance and Baroque to get these axes, to get these perspectives, and, and so on. Because things moved in space. And you need in time. So on, uh, they, they move in time, and by that they, get, uh, they can articulate their speciality. So it's a principal misunderstanding that this is somehow real. It's one of the basic things you have to, to understand that this is not real. So these are therefore it's important. These are instructions. So this is if you have these chairs. So it's they are not produced. They are from a production line. So it doesn't matter. So it's it's the same. The chair is a production. It's it's a product. So it doesn't matter how many you have, it doesn't matter in which sequence you're doing, and so on. It's a sequence of things. It's not a chair there, it's not important. It's important that they're all the same, from the same production line, and that you're putting them at this place. That's very different from uh, the Greek temple, <laughs> where uh, the stories are different. So this is how it uh, works in, in, in Blender. So you have the same thing and then we can systematize it and synchronize it. So it's a little, yeah, it's like Mathematica. It comp starts, comp so it's, it's optimized in the way how you, it's very compact. You can do whatever you like. It's within the Lambda calculus. You can structure it. It's super compact. It looks like, a, uh, it, it, if you can have super compact things and like a poem, Super complicated to read, but very compact, but explicit. 
It's a notation. So and then it sounds in a, in a, in a specific way. So now in Blender. Blender is doing the same thing, but completely different on the other side. <laughs> so it, in Blender, this is a kind of notation. So it's and, and thinks graphics as sound, which I think is architecture. So this is an architectural view to the graphics. And now we get the quite opposite uh, position with Blender, because there it's a visual thing, how to control things with all these interfaces. So now yes, let's uh, have a look how this works. So this is an object. Uh, <coughs> it's obvious that we have our view here and we can uh, look around in our, in our object. So our object is called cube. We can, uh, so this is uh, the director's thing. So this is, uh, no, let's, let's go first for the actor. So this is, for example, power. This is our actor. And this is our mesh. So our mesh can be edited here. Now we can change Paul with this. So uh, so leave it. So now we have Paul, the body of, uh, of Paul, the, the actor. So it's like our rectangle or disk or whatever. So it's just the shape, the mesh. This is the material. So the next database. So one database of the actors, one database of, uh, of the uh, masks. So it's a material, how to look like. So now we have to create a new thing, for example, red. So we go here and have a lot of different parameters, but this doesn't matter. So we simply give him a red and we can see it as red. So that's the second step, red power. <laughs> so, yeah. Third is that we give him a directive. We say, yeah, that's, it's kind of nonsense to have it always at the uh, zero point. So move it here. And these are the parameters of the actor. So this here is now uh, Romeo. And Romeo gets a directive to move at this place at time number one. And this is our stage. We can zoom and have a camera and light and whatever. So it's the same story. So now I can, for example, with, uh, with a dupli link, I can duplicate it. And I can have another instance of that. So you see, this is Romeo uh, in another instance. And Romeo is Paul. And Paul has the red mask. So if I change the mask, <laughs> then I simply say, uh, for example, I can create a new mask. I say blue, go that to blue. So now if I change all the mask to red and I can change it to blue. So the interesting thing now is <laughs> that I'm looking at it. So my hypothesis is that looking at it is fine if you are in design mode. Then it's a little complicated not to look at it, to see how this might work and to adapt that and so on, to make the design. So this is for looking. That's a cat function. And this you have with the edit mode. So now, seeing that these are instances of Paul, this, it's not there. So, really, so you, you have to look now. Romeo is Romeo one. That's the same, but it's another. So it's a little complicated. You have to organize it now here in hierarchies, or seeing that yeah, how 
what is the effect of that? So it's simply not there explicitly how these things correlate. <laughs> it's like the visual of the sound. It's simply not there. Of course you can change it, but you don't know what, what happens. So therefore, these things, especially if you're in all the Bing story and the cat system suffer massively from that. that <laughs> so especially if you start to work in, in groups with, uh, around these things. So with multiple people and, and, and so on. The problem is that these structures are always implicitly. You can't explicate them. It's, it's never, nobody there. Then you make some papers and say, yes, it should be structured like that. And then this structure should be here. But depending on what you're clicking here, crisscross everything because it is not a visual thing to organize your data. It sounds. If you want that harmonic, it sounds and you need a notation for that. So look at this and we will uh, have uh, much, this how, how precise it's written here what you have, the same thing. It's explicit, it's a notation. So now let's, uh, let's uh, go for uh, if we are in a stage play, then <coughs> we don't want to have this uh, note of, <laughs> of Mathematica. Uh, uh, lambda calculus, dense uh, articulation of our graphics. So we really want to make a stage for that. So now I want to show you how in Mathematica you can make a stage where you can have very precise overview of how to organize your things. So go here. I gave you all this code if you're interested. So a little complicated is to get the stage. So this is our stage and it's not it's complicated but not complex so it simply says the graphics as we had it here and then there is a play whatever it is we protect this variable and then we say we want to have a frame then we get a certain plot range and then we get the grid lines we no frame automatic and so on all this stuff and by that we get uh, our stage in a certain setup we can uh, put it here plus minus four then we get a bigger one so we can uh, increase it. So that's our stage. It's a certain design, you don't care. And it's called the stage. So if we, if we put this here is our stage and we don't care, we have stage one. So there is a tutorial in Blender where I show you that in Blender you can have a certain layer for staging and this has different stage to stage your models in different environments just by a click. So it always takes too much craftsmanship to show that, not in these, uh, in these uh, uh, lectures. It always takes, so for example, this tutorial to make, make a proper setup and model it in the way I'm talking now is one and a half hour at least, yeah? So it's, I think it's one, it's 90 minutes, 95 minutes, and it's a lot. But you can, if you want to do that and, and learn that and train that, this is the shortest way I know. So therefore always these uh, uh, game examples to be fast and then you can start to think about this. this. So now, first step, so we have the stage. Now we get the actor. So we simply say actor one is our rectangle on minus dot five, minus dot two dot five, um, minus dot five, dot five. So this is a nice vector, this is our actor. And now in, instead of playing nothing, we play actor one. Oops. Here. 
now we have vector one. <coughs> yeah. Now we give him a mask. So you see actor, we can have a lot of different actors. Now we give him a mask. We can have a lot of different masks. So we simply say, um, <coughs> how did I do it here? Where do I have a name for it? Oops. Um, figure. So figure one is red, actor one. Now, if I take this figure, put it here, then it's red. Second level. So in Blender, you have the meshes, and it's a library of meshes, and here you have a library of uh, materials. And you patch them, you connect them. You can have actor two. And you say, this is our disk. Point uh, oil, one, so, actor two. Now I can sw simply switch that and you have that. We can have another figure. Is blue, actor two. And put figure two here. Very simple. It's a notation of what you want to con uh, connect in, in, a, in a certain way. So, last and then you're fine is the directives. So we simply say row or one is, and then we say uh, these crazy commands. We say figure one, and you want to have it translated to. 1.0 and that's roll one. So put push roll here. If I want another figure for the row, well, if I want to have this figure here with actor one, check. <laughs> so that's it. My hypothesis is. And we will go there uh, uh, in the rest of our lecture series and different examples, getting more in that. So the interesting now is that if we are with our dichotomy of design and model, and we are precise in these concepts, then this is design. So this is with Blender. And this is architectural model. And this is with code. So the idea is then that you create libraries of meshes and materials. And you design all the things or you get it from internet like we've seen it last week. So just get all this stuff from internet, collect that, or make all the photos, have big databases, and you simply say, yeah, I take actor three, I take this color, I take this material with that, and so on. And then you make your stage play. You are the director of the thing. And then put it on a certain stage. So, yeah, go here, and then we make a break. Roll, go for row two, figure one, minus, give him two, or a movement, whatever. Um, so this is row two, row one, and now we want to have two, row two. Here we are. <laughs> Last step is the uh, stage. 
And now you see how abstract this is, so that all these things is not visual, it sounds. So, <laughs> and uh, for example, put it in 3D. So now I take another stage, and you see you don't have to change your architecture to make it 3D. Very, very funny. So this is another stage. I call it stage two, uh, so don't. So we take just this code and make it in 3D. So, of course, rectangle needs then a third uh, coordinate. So we simply say zero here. And it's not a rectangle, it's a cuboid. So, and a zero, uh, take it from, yeah, 0 point minus 0 0.5 and uh, 0.5. Now, this, uh, the disk is a sphere. So, and of course, it needs another coordinate. This is to be done in Blender. Had nothing to do with the architecture, it's design. So, masks, same. Here, row. I want to have a translation, and of course I have to say what to do with, uh, with that. So put it on, on Z1, put that on Z1, put that on Z1, so it's on the stage, one meter high, and that's it play the two-dimensional game. And then I say I want to have stage two, which is a three-dimensional one. And the rest is the same. And look at this. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. So your architecture is completely independent of how you describe it, how to do it and where to do it. So it's hosting a language. And it's rendered into certain graphics. It has nothing to do. So it's, it's like having these, um, this notation and then you play it and in, a, in a concert hall or play it in a, in, a, in a chamber or play it on a bed or a good piano and so on. This is a notation and this notation sounds whatever instrument you're using. And then with building information models, you simply say, I need another stage. Just instead of rendering it 3D, counting numbers and instances and prices or whatever. If you go to civil engineering, simply count the loads. It has nothing to do with uh, directly with, you know, with uh, the notation of your, of your story. So of course, if you make a bad story, in a bad notation, it looks bad, <laughs> or it sounds bad. <laughs> so you have to learn that, that it's good. But it has nothing to do with graphics. So, 10 minutes break, and then we continue. Thanks. <laughs>